Azola has enormous potential as a livestock feed due to 1. Its high content in proteins, essential amino acids, vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin B12, beta-carotene, growth promoter intermediaries and minerals. 2. Its ability to proliferate without inorganic nitrogen fertilization. 3. Its high rate of growth in water without the need to displace existing crops or natural ecological systems. Azola is very rich in proteins, essential amino acids, vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin B12, beta-carotene, growth promoter intermediaries and minerals including calcium, phosphorus, potassium, ferrous, copper, magnesium. On a dry weight basis, Azola has 25 to 35 percent protein content, 10 to 15 percent mineral content, and 7 to 10 percent comprising a combination of amino acids, bioactive substances and biopolymers. Azala's carbohydrate and oil content is very low. Poultry and in particular ducks and chickens can be raised on a diet including fresh azola. It has long been recognized as a feed for wildfowl in the USA and for domesticated ducks in China and it has been used as a feed to domestic fowl in Vietnam, Dao and Tran, 1966. The Japanese farmer Dr. Takao Furuno has developed rice duck azola loach cultivation as an integrated biosystem which eliminates the need for fertilizers, herbicides and pesticides by incorporating duck raising into organic rice cultivation. The approach is now being replicated with substantial success all over Southeast Asia as an effective way to boost farmers' incomes, reduce environmental impact and improve food security. Azala's potential as a feed for mallard, egg production, and muscovy, meat production, ducks has also been investigated in Vietnam. Becerra et al., 1995 conducted feeding trials to determine the effect of feeding Azola microphylla as partial replacement of the protein in boiled soya bean and diets based on sugar cane juice for meat ducks. Fresh Azola was offered ad libitum 3, 4 or 5 times per day, at a rate of 1 kg fresh weight per pen at each feeding and the times increased with the age of the birds to minimize losses. The rations were fed from the age of 1 month to 70 days old. Fodder is an important requirement for cattle. Even if the animals are fed with commercial feeds from the market, fresh green grass or dry straw is essential as fodder availability greatly reduces the expenditure on commercial feeds. The success of a dairy plant depends largely on increasing milk production without escalation in feeding cost. Growing fodder grass is a good option. Another is Azola cultivation. The increase in the milk yield was to the tune of 10 to 15 percent, which went up to 20 percent during summer months from February to May. It is found that the increase in the quantity of the milk produced on the base of nutrient was higher than the quantity of Azola fed. Hence, it is assumed that more than the carbohydrate, protein content and other components, like carotenoids, biopolymers, probiotics etc., may be contributing to the overall increase in the production of milk. They also concluded that feeding with Azola improved the quality of milk and the health and longevity of livestock.